And welcome to the Town of Douglas Planning Board meeting for Thursday, February 24th, 2022. Time is now 7.02. First item on the agenda, 7 p.m. public hearing continued from February 10th, 2022, Darkstream LLC. They are requesting a continuance to March 10th, 2022. Can I hear a motion? Oh. Motion made by that. Mr. Marks, seconded by Mr. Zwicker. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, Mr. Benoit, would you like to pick something? Sure, would you like to do the decision for Hawk Hill? Okay. There is a draft decision in your folder. Uh, it's not everybody's folder because I got to this about a little uh, this afternoon, but it's in a, the chairperson's signature folder. That's um, This was bounced off the applicant for a couple of minor comments. The corrections were made, and they are satisfied with the language within the decision. So, okay. I was ready to go for the okay. 10 minutes that could be circulated and signed if you wish. Okay, great. And then there is an accessory apartment extension. We have that in our folder too, right? We picked that up. It's something we're going to read. Yeah. So, yep. for a. Okay. Uh, so it's a renewal. It. I think the chair has mm -hmm. um, the accessory apartment. I could pass apartment. this. Yeah, John. John. Uh, for John A. Oh, Christine, do we know those people? Yep, not to exceed 792 square feet. Um, permit start date is going to be March 9th, 2022, for three years. And the occupant is the mother. Everything so, uh, looks in order? Everything's in order? Yes. Matt? Yes. I'd like to, well, yep. it's not a motion. For, yep. Is it a motion? I'd like to. Make a motion to approve the accessory apartment extension mm -hmm. for Joan and Christine Ferno at One Stone Hill Drive. Um, I don't know what to okay, mm -hmm. so. Motion made by Mr. Sokrat, oh, second, second by Mr. Marks. Second. Sorry, Mr. Greco, you're a little late on the trigger. On the draw. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Okay, So we can sign that. You want to pass that around? Let me sign it. Do you want to pass it? Yeah, I'm going to sign it. Okay, so. Was that headed for me, or is this? Did you sit, did you put this here for me? No. Are you passing it? Oh. So I can't. Mm -hmm. Well, I did the mullet, and I did all the other ones, right? Um, yeah. You didn't have a vote, though. Okay. I would just. Um, the I vote just won't do Your anything. signature's not. Yeah, your signature's not. It's needed. not needed anyway. Thank. You. Um, we also have a voucher. What's that? Oh, I already. Did. Yeah, and this one is. There's two for hot kill. Two for hot kill. I signed one. I thought it was the art. As long as everyone else signed it. We, we approved it, but we didn't yeah. sign it. I guess. Do a fee structure? You would. Oh, one place to sign on this one? Yeah. There you go. Do you want to do a fee structure? Get it all done for mailing? Should be easy. Fee schedule increase. Increase in cost of certified mail. Oh. Okay. Yeah, everything's Hold on. Need a motion on that? Just, just, it's just for the mail increase? Okay. All right. right. Mr. Benoit, any? Just this? Okay. All right. So we need to modify our fee schedule in the, the rules and regs. just bill. Yeah, so let's, uh, yeah, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, fee increase for certified mailing. From $5 to $7.33 because of the increase on the post office. Sure. 
I'll make that motion. Motion okay. made by Mr. Wicker, seconded by Mr. Marks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 be able to use that. Oh, okay. Hey, you missed my first use of the gavel when you were gone. I didn't missed. I watched everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not the same as in person, though. Yeah, it has more shock value. More vibrancy. Since I was gone, if I may, Madam Chair, for you, yeah. make a comment that I think our community development director has already placed his stamp on us. And I think having these nameplates, having the gavel, getting organized with his recommendations has really made us a lot more efficient and uh, elevated. Thank yeah, I think it, it, so far so good. You know, thank you. You can come thank in. Thank you for the a feedback. Couple of weeks, you can come back. <laughs> Well, he was off his probation time, so I know. that's why he <laughs> wants to, he has a vision, so we'll go with that. possible maybe next meeting get an update from Bob on from community development to see what's going on with some of those supposed projects. Yeah like an executive a little, summary. A little, a little update. It's okay. been a while. We could request that right? Unless you uh, know uh, uh, through the chair Mrs. Wicker. Um, I'm hesitant on that in a, in a sense because if they're conceptual and not formally filed with our office, I don't believe we should take them into an open meeting yet unless the applicant gives us consent. But um, if you're looking for a very, I mean, I can tell you that we're looking at two more additional large-scale warehouses that are in the work. Okay. That's two more. All right. But I, I don't want to give away anything no, no, without no, applicant no, consent. Not. It's just that Bob used to be here every now and then. Mm -hmm. And we'll just kind of say, hey, we're kind of anticipating a start time of filing. It was supposed to be, I thought, earlier than what it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the whole reason why. Was if it's still things are still in the works and moving forward, or things just kind of stopped? They're moving. Okay. <laughs> They're definitely moving. All right. No, sounds great. There's one on our next agenda, and there's one that put out an RFP recently, so <clears throat> they're uh, they're moving. Okay, well that's that's good to hear. That. That's on our next agenda. Okay, time is now 7:11. Moving on, 7:10 p.m. Public hearing continued from February 10th, 2022, Family Convenience Center application for site plan review and offer for a special permit. 74 Main Street. Good evening, name and address please. Good evening, Ray Whitehead, 17 Beacon Road in Webster. Also here is Sam Skaronsky, my manager, and Rob Lucier is on the interweb up there from CMG Engineering, our civil engineer. Included in your packet is a letter from the peer reviewer, mm -hmm. which I believe gives us an all clear on mm -hmm. all of the issues that have been back and forth on uh, their comments. There were six items that were unresolved at last meeting. Rob is just going to very quickly tell you the resolution of those. Mm -hmm. So Rob, could you do that? Sure. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me OK? Yes. Perfect. Glad to hear it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, as Ray just stated, uh, there were a couple outlying items and a couple uh, things that we were discussing at the last meeting. Um, and I guess I can just quickly go over those few items. I believe there were there were six bigger items that actually reflected some changes in the plan set. So I guess 
the first item was, uh, I know we discussed receiving comments from the Douglas Fire Department. We were waiting on um, the hearing from them and we did finally receive some uh, info from the fire chief. So the fire chief would like to see a fire hydrant on site. So we included one. Um, it's located in the front landscape area right off of Main Street. Um, if you want, can show you the exact location. Dead um, center to the building yeah. by the street. Yeah, we have a, the revised set. So okay. what page right are you on? C C three. Yeah, it, you can see it on sheet C3, it's called out. Um, and then it's also shown on the utility plan because we're showing a uh, six inch water line connection. And then I believe it's sheet 7.2 has the construction detail for that. Um, yeah, C, sheet C7.2 has a construction detail for the fire hydrant. So we added all that information. Um, the peer reviewer saw it, he didn't have any comments. Um, so that was one of the items that we, we wanted to address. Was the fire department specific on the location or gave you the full permission it, to it put it wherever? It was a forever? phone call I had with yep. the chief. Mm -hmm. We agreed for the purposes of this plan to center it on the property so it was equidistant around okay. everything. Mm -hmm. um, my comment to him was, that has before we put it in, we'll revisit. And if you prefer to see it in a different location, it doesn't matter to me. Um, okay. But but that was the initial quick, let's just put it front and center. Through Madam Chair. Okay, yep. Is it yeah. while, you, no, sorry. while you're putting the hydrant in, if yes. you can do it, maybe this is petty, but you know how the standard is to have a little flaggy thing on it in case of snow and being covered, it would just be great to identify it. That's it. It's just a little thing. But Done. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Is that something With we can... flag, yeah. yeah that's good. Right? With flag. Okay. Sure thing. Did you discuss anything with the water commissioners or water department on the hydrant? No. Where are the other ones that actually put it in? Um, I, mean, well, I, I guess know. they would have final approval. Oh, yeah. Sorry, so I know we did discuss with Bob Sullivan, who was during the tech review meeting, regarding uh, like water pressure and connections. Yeah. And he didn't seem to have any issues with any connections along Main Street. Even Rydell uh, Road, we could have had connections as well. Um, so he seemed to think that that would be fine to, to have that. Um, we didn't specifically state anything regarding the fire hydrant itself, but based on the fact that we, he did know that we were going to have a fire suppression line connected to the convenience store. So I don't anticipate any issues with um, with adding the hydrant as well. Uh, and he did state that, you know, pressure wise, we should be all set. All right, thank you. No problem. Um, you would. I don't know if the board has any other comments on the or questions regarding the fire hydrant. Um, yeah, we'll be happy to discuss or I can move on to the next item. I would just say just let the water department know that a hydrant has been discussed now. Just let them know about it. Yep. I'll, 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 sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay, you can continue on. All right, so <coughs> next item is the WB62 truck. We discussed this at the last meeting. Um, we just added the WB62 vehicle template to the truck turn figure, which is C8.0. Um, just showing that it can make, you know, the um, it can drive around the building, it can access the loading zone and leave the site without mounting any curves or um, you know, getting into any parking spaces. It can maneuver around the site. So we included that in the uh, truck turn figure. Um, the next item, I don't want to just rush through these if, if the board has any 
questions or comments. Or I mean, just I continue. Think, yeah, I think that you have agreed to everything that the board requested. Yes. So you could just hit the points, and then we can discuss yeah. if there's any. I mean, there you've complied Perfect. with everything that we've already discussed at the last meeting. So. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, I can. I'll just run through this. So the other item is regarding the quantity of the plants. We did remove the street trees per discussions with the planning group last meeting. Um, I believe there's a total of 11 trees. So that was the street trees, and then there's also a tree within one of the, or in very close proximity to a snow storage area. So that has been highlighted in the revised landscape plan. Um, there is some remaining uh, plantings in that front landscape area, but they're just small shrubs. Um, and those are around the proposed pylon sign and around the basins, the top of the slope, and also near the air tower and vacuum for uh, the vehicles. Or, sorry, not vacuums, the um, Sorry. Go there, we'll call Propane and uh, generator. I'm sorry, it was the proposed air tower and vacuums just in the front of the site. And then we also included uh, vegetation screening around the proposed transformer, uh, generator, and propane tanks in the back. So those are just poly bushes. Um, we also submitted the just some clarification to the sand soils for the stormwater basin. I know that was a very important item that mm -hmm. uh, the peer reviewer definitely needed to get some more information from us. And he was in agreement. So um, we addressed that with the information that we had with uh, revised soil logs as well as the peer reviewer that witnessed the soil testing, which was a different peer reviewer, he also um, confirmed that there were sand soils uh, during those test pits. And then the last item was the security measures around the basins. Based on our discussions at the last meeting, we removed the fencing around those basins. Uh, so now there isn't any proposed uh, split rail fencing like we previously were showing on the plans. Yeah, and just to clarify, the board has no regulations on the fencing. It's um, BMP, so the board had no opinion on, on that fencing issue. So we're, we weren't, it's not required or excluded. So just want to say, like, the board didn't decide to remove the fence. It was not a requirement of this board. So, based, Correct. I so think, what you're saying based on the board's discussion, I just want to clarify that um, it's nothing to do with the board <laughs> for the gotcha. surrounding surrounding the base. But just to be clear, it will be built without it. Yes. Right. Okay. And and that's what the plans show. Yep. And, and the one caveat that regarding that is once we're up and running, we, Matt and I discussed it, and um, I also talked to Ken about it, the building commissioner. Mm -hmm. If we deem that there's a risk, mm -hmm. we may have to address it, and we'll do so outside of this board yeah. with the building. I think it's out of our purview anyway okay. for this submittal. Just want to, yes. based on our discussion, that the wording just is, was a little funny to me. So, no, no. for the record, we don't have any condition to say yes. Correct. Okay. Yep. So that's great. So, board, do we have any questions or comments no, about the no, revised no, plans? So the chair was about that hill. I I looked at that hill. I see him scrunched scrunched down in the snow. I mean, it was <laughs> not scientific. But it's, it's an issue. Now I know we meet the, the line of sight issues right. that the traffic guy. Yeah. I, I feel we need it, but I agree with you. The problem is there's some town land, there's my land, and there's the neighborhood. Yeah. I've talked to John Ferno already about the town that, that could be graded slightly differently and improve that. My land, we can regrade okay. and improve that. I can't speak and, and for I my agree. neighbor. Yes. Um, our plan is to include that with the traffic study, uh, as well as the stop signs that were requested by a, a, an abutter. And 
Okay. Put that all in one package. I will. I don't want to go to the neighbor until nope. I know what we're asking of him. Okay. Um, that's will, all I can. That's all we can ask for. Okay. I appreciate that. At least you look at it. You know, look at it and. Something will be done, okay. but maybe only up to the town line and... And that's fine. Yeah, any little bit, I think, would make a little bit of a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Anyone else? Aaron? No, just a matter of... Schultz? No. Rest of the night? No. Okay. Public comment. So, we want to close the hearing first. Um, anyone in the audience have any questions or comments? Eddie? No. Nope. Motion made by Mr. Marks. So moved, second. Second by Mr. Zwicker. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And contain a motion for both. Um, so there's waivers, right? Uh, no, there are no waivers nope. on this, um, Madam Chair. But just, just one little thing to clarify. So when we advertised this item, we did make mention of the drive through in the public hearing notice as part of the special permit application. However, on <coughs> the agenda, we mistakenly left that absent. Because it was covered in the public hearing notice, <clears throat> this, this can still be done as part of the application, stamped in, advertised in the notice with the word drive through. So the board this evening would actually be making three votes, one for site plan review, one for the act for special permit, and one for the drive through so. In accordance with the advertisement. Correct. Okay. And I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Marks made the motion. Mr. Zwicker made a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's the motion to approve. Yes. Okay. Friendly amendment. The motion was to approve. All three site plan review, aquifer special permit, drive through special permit. With conditions. With conditions. Okay. All right. Thanks. And I called it as uh, all those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. You're all set. All right, so we have Thank you draft. very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Yeah. Madam Chair, there's a draft decision in the Thank folder. Uh, Mr. Whitehead and I kind of got to this at the tail end of the day today, but we did go over the, the language together just maybe a half hour ago. Okay. And I redrafted it, and he is happy with the language. Condition. All right, let's sign it up. If you wish, the five conditions that are listed on the decision, if you want to review those with the board just to make sure they're consistent with what we talked about, sure. I believe that would be a good idea. Sure. <laughs> okay, so we have five conditions. This project is subject to all conditions of approvals granted by applicable local boards and commissions as well as state or federal agencies. The project must be constructed in accordance with approved plans. Any modification of the approved plans in excess of minor site plan modification criteria outlined in section 9.4.6 of the Douglas Zoning Bylaws is subject to additional review and or approval by the planning board. The applicant must work together with the applicable local and state officials to perform proposed work located within the right of way of Route 16 and Rydell Road. The applicant must hire police detail at its own expense to govern traffic flow on Route 16 during construction if deemed necessary and the appointment of the chief of police if the applicant intends to revise the landscape plan in front of the business within the first year of operation commencement. The applicant will work with the community development director to ensure no unsafe conditions are created. Anyone want to add anything else? Couple, two little things. And then you have our four little Yep, the rest of the stuff in there. And the applicant did not request any of Madam Chair, may I address the other? Sure. Uh, so this will be stamped in with the clerk on Monday. They've already closed the town hall for tomorrow for the snowstorm. 
<clears throat> so we'll get this stamped in on Monday for you, and then there's a 20-day appeal period before you can take the decision to register and have them report. Very good. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Can't, can't wait yeah. to see it. Us too. I really appreciate all the attention you've given us, and I think it's going to be a better project with your help. No, thank you, thank you so much. You okay. Appreciate your patience. Thank you. Yeah, it's my place to be in charge of my uh, golf cart when I come over. <laughs> For you? I, hey, Goody can <laughs> charge his, then you can charge yours. A golf cart. <laughs> Awesome. That's Ernie's test. Thank you again, everybody. Thanks, Rob. Thanks. Thank you. I'm signing off now. Okay, good night. Thank you. Have a great night. You Have too. Night, you guys. Okay. Um, Mr. Benoit, do you want to go over anything? Sure. So, number five, ongoing develop development, letter H. For 202 and 206 Maple Definitive Subdivision at Knoll. Let's get the actual name of this one. <clears throat> so what we have is a 53G account that needs to be replenished. Mm -hmm. And there is, uh, and it appears that the surety bond for this was, uh, although drafted, never actually obtained from the developer. Is this Isabella? Uh, the name of this one. This is uh, just the Cosmo Realty Group. Oh, oh, that's the other one with John the Cosmo. daughter. That's the one with the daughter. Maple um, Street. That Maple was Street. trying to. Remember, he came in with the paperwork yeah, and the. Yeah, the surety on that is the other house It was released. <clears throat> one of them was released. There's right? two houses down here. There's three lots. The third lot was the surety. Yeah. Then, um, and it has nothing's been done with that line. As far as I know. Okay. It's the developer. Oh, okay. All right. So ultimately, Madam Chair, what we're asking for is to request that the developer provide an update for us at a future meeting. Yeah, let's do it. Go for it. We have a motion to send a letter. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Mr. Marks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Further updates, Madam Chair, is item six, letter D, zoning amendment. Mm -hmm. You have a healthy pile of these in your packet. <laughs> what we're looking for this evening is, well, I'll get to that in a second. But ultimately, we have some modifications. Based on the 55 plus bylaw that we had been reviewing, mm -hmm. two, two things have occurred since. Number one, I sent this off to a consultant colleague of mine who's been doing housing reviews, master plans, housing production plans for over 30 years. I had a look at a couple of sections of the 55 plus bylaw, and she noted a couple of fair housing potential violations that we have hiding in there. I sent it off to town council, who I'm yet to hear back from. Okay. The other item is what you'll see as modification to section 7.2, 7.26. These are recommendations made by uh, our absent member, Mr. Stevens. Believes that these changes to the flexible development bylaw may replace the need for a 55 plus exclusive bylaw. Mm -hmm. Kind of the first one in our pack. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked the board to really two things here. Number one, if you want to take the time to digest this, that's fine. But the warrant closes on March 4th. And I'd be looking to have a placeholder at town meeting warrant. According to the 40A section five. We have to send this off to the Board of Selectmen for their vote to consider it for the warrant, and then it would come back to us to hold a public hearing. So we would have time to review this to consider it anyways in advance of the public hearing. I would say to put the placeholder in as it is. I agree. And uh, then we can modify it. So this one would essentially be two placeholders, and one might get pulled from the town meeting floor. Mm -hmm. One of them is the modification to section 7.2, and the other one would be the creation of the 55 plus bylaw under section 7.4. Mm -hmm. Okay. In addition to that, we have, as we discussed at the previous meeting, a change to the section 10 definitions mm -hmm. to add a basement elevation height description, a building height description for the 
building commissioner's uh, <coughs> recommendation. So we'll be looking for a, a motion to consider that for placeholder as well. I'll entertain a motion for the section 10 definitions, placeholder. Please. So that motion, if someone wants to move it, would be for uh, in compliance with Chapter 48, Section 5, to provide a letter to the Board of Selectmen for individual article consideration at the 2022 Springtown meeting. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Schultzberg. Second. Second by Mr. Greco. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That's, that's to get a kick back to us for public hearing. Eventually, yes. Right. So that's Section 10. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll section 9.4 of the changes to the site plan review. Mm -hmm. These are, excuse me, and uh, they used to be highlighted red, so That's now I'm failing saying. to see where they are. I will say that. <laughs> In uh, 9.4.2, I'm replacing so, shall submit five copies with the number 10. Mm -hmm. In section 9.4.4, same thing, replacing five with 10. Mm -hmm. And then you can see kind of the last sentence under minor site plan. Yep. You see the board, mm -hmm. board can review a minor plan without notice of public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, without yeah. The board reserves the right to request such notice following initial review of the proposed plan by majority vote of the board if the board finds the project may impact public health, safety, and welfare. Mm -hmm. I bounced around. I actually missed one up top. Second sentence, site plan review requires notice of public hearing procedure in accordance with MGL Chapter 48, Section 11. Similar to uh, special uh, permits. So right now we had nothing in here that says we have to hold public hearings. Right, okay. So that, that sentence covers that. I don't got, love like the minor site plan. I kind of chucked that one in there, I yeah. apologize. Uh, but ultimately, it kind of leaves the interpretation up to uh. staff, really. Mm. So I, what, the way this would work is if someone had a minor mod that didn't fit the criteria that's outlined above, they could come here just request the board's audience without the public hearing at first, and then the board can decide if it's more than minor and needs that public hearing. But, what, but if it what? doesn't meet the criteria, then they should be going for a full. Board. Correct. So I don't really want to put it in the board's hands. We're mm -hmm. not even open, public open, and now we're going to we're going to vote on if the project may impact public health. Mm -hmm. So a 500 square foot um, construction is may trigger us to require them to do a full-blown site plan approval. Mm -hmm. But the bio, the, the regulation says that they don't. Right. So it should just be then we should take out the criteria then. That's if we're gonna require it anyway, why wouldn't we require it? There could be one possibility of that project impacting safety. Correct. Sure. So why are we going to decide that if we don't even know what any you know what that impact could be? But we're like, oh, it's our opinion. So either it isn't, it's a minor thing, or, or it's, it's not. not. It's one or the other. Yeah. It, it, I don't think voting. I'm not sure voting for. And as far as to the town minor, we still. What is the threshold for minor? It's. Is that, like, is that what, like Jay said before, it's up to us to decide? Okay. Well, no, the minor to the real special permit is the square footage threshold in the bylaw. 500, through you, Matt. Yeah. Not the chair. Yeah. 500 square feet can we be all, you know, additional to something could be all the difference yeah. in the perspective, presentation, safety, anything to the project. So I. And I don't know why it says um, exceed a total gross floor area of 500 square feet, but not exceed a total gross floor area of 2,000. That doesn't. That's how it reads today. Yeah, that needs to be modified. That, yeah. that doesn't make any sense at all. We could revisit this section. So one is Ireland. net. Yeah, one's net and one is gross. So it should be like net 500 and then gross, like say, whole storage to 2,000. The gross would be gross and. My intent here was just to make sure the board gets to make that call. Yeah. But we could skip this one all together. I just wanted to have it for discussion and just focus on you're, that. You're 10 copies, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> that one's easy. And then making sure we actually get public hearings for site plan review. That one's easy, too. Yeah. So we'll strike the minor site plan piece. Just yeah. keep the top two. Okay. And um, I would like to revise that if that does say we'll exceed 
but not exceed. Will exceed 500. Will exceed 500, but not exceed 2,000. So it's between 5 and 2,000. Yeah. But then just do not to exceed 2,000. Right. Unless it's 450 square feet. But and why it's non residential. It so it's not a minor site plan, I guess. Yeah. I would say not. Well, I don't know. I would have to think about it a little bit. It's convoluted. Yeah. And we're kind of out of time. <laughs> Just to get it, to get it <laughs> you on can the do, Yeah, do a placeholder. To so we can, so yeah, we can call for the, the vote on that. So, that. so that'd be a motion under Chapter 40 of Section 5. Letter of the Board of Selectmen for Individual Article for consideration at the 2022 Springtown Meeting, Section 9.4. And I'll entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Zwicker. Second. Second by Mr. Schultzberg. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving down the line. I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, are you having a meeting? Yes. Is it being taped? Yes. Is there something a, we can help you with? A jump start in the car? Or what? I'm oh. damsel in distress. I have a battery that's dead. Oh. oh. Yeah. yeah. I got cables in the back, but you got cables. I have a. I'm at Pauline Gablack's house on her knees, and I'm helping her out. Okay. And so I'm trying to cross the street with yeah. my um. car is going. This way instead of that way. So, okay, so you're gonna just. I think I might have a jumper. Kit. No, I got a. I got a 20 footer. No, I have a like a little machine that jumps you. Yeah, that doesn't. She's saying you can't get access okay. to the front of the car. How long are we gonna be? I, I can. I can do it. Just, if anything else, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be much should longer. Because I am. Um, yeah, and I have to get going too. I have to keep right. in my house. So. We shouldn't be. I'll much wrap longer. it up. I ask yes. Before we go, what yes. is the motion again? In accordance with Chapter 40A, Section 5, to re recommend this to the, the warrant for the selectmen um, for that. And I already called it, right? It was made yep. and motioned in. Yeah, just um, a formal recommendation to the Board of Selectmen for the new articles, for the zoning articles. The next one we have is the solar. Draft bylaw. I don't know if the board had any comments on this one. Please tell me. No. <laughs> but this one is is straight out of the template from the state and tuned to Douglas. I also uh, went over these for a long period of time, probably over a year, with the town of Auburn to make sure this was really catered to making sure that solar doesn't level forests or is, isn't. I'll, I'll point that one out specifically. There is an item on here. Um, under land clearing and soil erosion impact 6.8.11.2. My intention of doing this <clears throat> large scale clearing of forested areas in excess of five acres for construction systems prohibited. The idea here is for solar to come in on existing fields, areas that are already cleared. Uh, a lot of the feedback that we're getting is uh, folks tend to not like large swaths of forest being leveled all at once for a solar array. So the purpose of this bylaw is to not only control that aspect of it, but to control things like battery storage, stormwater management, decommissioning bonds, emergency services access, monitoring, reporting, Oops. security, et cetera. So <clears throat> I'm looking for a similar motion on this one just to get it to the selectmen and then we can continue to dissect it at a future meeting. Okay. If I can, to the chair. Mm -hmm. The only reason, which is great, we don't need to be leveling out forests, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if somebody owns a large swath of land, mm -hmm. and there's a forest that come in, yep. give them the permit to clear, cut it, or cut it out, so they wipe out 15 acres or whatever land, then he mm -hmm. goes and applies for a solar permit, mm -hmm. you're not going to deny that it. That was exactly what I was going to say. Because, I mean, that, that's one of the I, I can own... A thousand acres. There is a workaround. And, and come in and say, hey, I want to clear cut for a city, I want to wipe out mm -hmm. 30 acres here. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I mean, that's perfectly legal. True, madam. I mean, that, that can be done any mm -hmm. day of the week. You are correct. You know, I could also make it a farm. It's discouraging the clear cutting. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it's true, not going true, to be a. Uh, yes. I, I understand what you're saying. I think it's an attitude of ours to put in that, even if it doesn't have mm -hmm. teeth. Mm -hmm. I think we should put it in yeah. because it suggests that we want to be out in front of things if we can, even if they don't have teeth, but at least it shows how we feel about the environment. So. 
and, and it's a double-edged sword, it, and I concur. The thing is, though, you put something in print that you can't enforce. But it, they're not going to they're not going to laugh at us. They're just going to so, say, "We understand your intent, but guess what? We're smarter." We can go around this and let well, it go around. and they wouldn't be able to. I mean, obviously, if they apply and then they uh -huh. see that, and there's, you know, then we know what really, they Then they have to pause their application, I guess, Correct. until they get approval from DCR. Right. True. It for doesn't the, hurt. True. Yeah. For 61B forestry cutting, they're only allowed to remove trees of a certain caliber. Now, I understand what you're saying, where you technically are allowed to clear cut your own lot at this. I understand that, and. Um, but if we can control solar for the use and they're clear cutting for the use, True. at least we're out in front of it a little bit. There's, there's one thing that, that really kind of may stop this in its tracks. Is there's currently a su Supreme Justice Court case the city of Waltham against the developer. That case is being heard on March 9th. And there could be a lot of fallout from that, and which could detrimentally inhibit the town's ability to regulate these projects moving forward. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, my suggestion was to get this out there and hope that court case goes in our favor. Yeah, all right. And if it nullifies I mean, it, it nullifies it. By the time it gets the attorney general review one way or the other, that, that mm -hmm. I think so. Or just deny it or accept it. Right. Mm -hmm. case goes out. And uh, to the chair, if I'm not mistaken, this has been brought up a while ago with Jay. And I think the Dover effect, the yeah. Dover mm -hmm. comes in. <coughs> yeah, that's why I said we don't have much. Where we have absolutely no. And that's that why. Whatsoever. And that's before we go Dover, too far. It's no, it's not Dover. Dover is religious exemption. Yeah, that's religious. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, this was added to it. I heard it. Excuse this me. was added to it. I heard it. And I'd like to find out before we move. And waste time on this. Well, we can vote uh, as having this as a placeholder, though. Yes, I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But before we get into too much depth and detail, uh, um, I it's agricultural, and people were trying to qualify solar as agricultural. Um, I that didn't. I believe it was excluded. Commercial um, farms. Commercial solar farms were excluded from that. I'm pretty sure because uh, Webster did it. They ex they um, are not permitted, so they've not permitted them in certain zones in Webster. Okay. And I think that that had changed a bunch of years ago. No, I agree. I mean, having something <coughs> is needed, but I hate wasting hours and hours and hours of something that is. Can't be enforced. Um, yeah, it says 48 section <coughs> 3 is the Dover Amendment establishes exemptions from zoning for solar panels. Sure. I don't know what year this okay. was, 13 years ago. <laughs> it might have changed. I think there were some cases that had it changed. But um, I'll entertain a motion to recommend the article. So moved. Second. With the verbiage that Matt, Mr. Benoit, would like. Um, motion made by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Mr. Socrat. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Just to piggyback off of section 7.2, which is the changes to the flex development, we still do have the 55 plus bylaw that we may want to consider for a placeholder. One's going to end up happening, one's not, but having the placeholder just in case, even yeah. if it gets moved off the town meeting floor, will be important. Okay. There's, a lot, there's a lot here as far as fair housing that we need to have vetted through town council. So. A similar vote. Um, I'd like to take a motion for recommending to Board of Selectmen. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Zwicker. Second. Second by Mr. Garko. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll that one. I have one other that's not here, unfortunately. Um, it is the future road acceptance of the two cul de sacs of the Stonegate development. We have that out for peer review now. This may or may not happen by the mm. spring. Mm. Um, given the weather and, and the ability to do the survey from our consultant. So a placeholder may get pulled from town meeting floor, but since it's underway, it, it's worth a shot. So I guess I'm looking for a placeholder just for uh, the Stonegate development road acceptances. The two cul-de-sacs that come off of Cobblestone Drive. All right, I'll entertain a motion. In the same amount, so moved. Motion made by Mr. Zwicker, second. second by Mr. Schultzberg. All is in favor? Aye. 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 Make sure I didn't miss any. 
you, you, you submitted a punch list? Or? It's peer review right now. Yep. It's on, on peer review yep. right now. Uh, what was the other one? So we got 7.4. Seven, oh, we didn't actually vote for 7.2. Apologize. We pushed that one off. Which one? 7.2, the flexible development changes proposed by Mr. Stevens. I thought we... Uh, I thought we did. We yeah. did not. I With did. the definitions? Yeah, we did not. We did section 10 first. We didn't do okay. that yet. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion for the um, <coughs> revisions to flexible development as a minute. So moved. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Zwickers made a motion. Also. Oh, Second by Mr. Schultzberg. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Here, one other thing. <laughs> uh, under miscellaneous, I don't know if this made it into everyone's folder or not, but I'm putting in a capital request for a community development department, and I'm meeting with the capital committee on Monday. Uh, the request that I'm putting in for is to provide us with uh, GIS software for mapping. The last version of GIS software that our department received was through the Conservation Commission in 2008. Not a single data layer has been updated since, even though we've been renewing the license for the last 15 years. Oh my gosh. Uh, 14, so. I thought we were. Oh, for GIS. Um, I thought oh, yeah. Water Department was doing all the hydrants and stuff, yeah. or highway. There's a lot of components. Highway? For this. So we have GIS online. That was, was stormwater and. Uh, yeah. Basins, catch basins, and. Yeah, yeah. It is uh, the report, but creating it into the map system. Oh, I thought they were with actually the, with the dated software is just simply not going to happen. So that plus all of the ArcGIS desktop stuff that we have now is no longer going to be serviced by Esri, who's the parent company, as of uh, 2026. So what they're doing is they're encouraging folks who have ArcGIS desktop to purchase the next wave, which is called ArcGIS Pro, so that you can work with one and slowly uh, train yourself and the folks with you uh, to learn ArcGIS Pro for when the transition actually occurs. It's a $14,000 initial cost, but with the state discount through Esri, it's $8,100 for us. $3,000 annual maintenance cost for this. Um, I'm putting this on with capital because this is uh, having the up-to-date maps to be able to produce these things. It cut back on so many costs for master plans, open space committee, any of these maps that we have to create that we're paying CMRPC for or other agencies for. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm looking for this evening is just a motion to support this capital request at the capital meeting on Monday. So moved. Motion second. made by Mr. Zwicker, second by Mr. Socrat. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. How much would you say the cost was? 8100 8, initial cost and then 3000 a year after the first four months. Yep. Does that, that doesn't exceed the threshold where you have to capital, does it? That's, this is the request I'm making. I just was hoping to have the board support for it. If this might not be FY 2023, this could be a year follow. I just wanted to take my best shot with the board support yep. for Monday. So he's going to go to capital. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a threshold. You, you right. can do stuff without going to capital. Yeah. Oh, threshold. 10K. Excuse me. 10K. This and this, this exceeds that. Uh, oh, at least thought... it does initially with 14,000 the discount, whether or not we get it. Uh, uh, so that was a great question. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Mm -hmm. So with the discount, we should be able to that 10K cap. I sure hope so. Yeah. Hope. But uh, getting appropriated to 14. But then we would have to get the money anyways. Right. So that's why I'm asking for that appropriation. Yeah, understood. That works. I believe that is all I have. Okay. Except for minutes. Does not object. I'm going to um, hold on the minutes and okay. for next time. Okay. We have How are we making out through the chair on pounds? Oh, I provided the plans uh, over to the consultant way for that. Sweet. Oh, you were able to find the uh, plan? Yeah, I uh, tried to find them. So awesome. We were able no, to, that's to great. Over. Saves a lot of backtrack. Oh, that's a good question. No. Say something. <laughs> Just trying to do <laughs> Mr. Benoit? No further. Nothing further. Four. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn? Yeah. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Ricker, second by Mr. Schultzberg. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.